Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of UA Eats. I'm UA, and we're doing a second buffet here in Vegas. Now, when we first touched down, we ate at the Wicked Spoon, which a lot of people said was the best buffet in Vegas, at least the best buffet when it comes to value. That's what a lot of people were saying. But today, we're eating at another spot. We're eating at the buffet inside Caesar's Palace. The lighting is not so good behind me, but we're eating at the Bacchanal Buffet in Caesars Palace and this is whether or not you think it's the best buffet in Vegas it's the most expensive one at more than $70 a person now I will let you guys know that I've been to the Bacchanal before the last time I went to Vegas many years ago I ate here and I thought it was pretty good um, I don't know if it was worth 70 bucks but it probably would have been worth 40 bucks like if it were the same price as the Wicked Spoon I thought it would have been for sure worth the price, but 70 bucks I thought was a little bit steep. But we're gonna jog our memory of the most expensive buffet in Vegas, the Bacchanal, and we're gonna give it a try. It has a different style than Wicked Spoon. It definitely, I don't know, I feel like it definitely looks a little bit more fancy to me. I don't know what you guys think. Now, Caesars Palace is a really, really cool casino hotel. In my opinion, one of the most beautiful casinos in Vegas. So it only makes sense that the Bacchanal is gonna be pretty fancy on the inside too. Now, it's relatively early. It's about 5.20 and there's already a huge line, but luckily we have a reservation, so let's go. Okay guys, we are now finally seated at the Bacchanal. Pretty long line, but luckily we had a reservation, so we actually didn't wait that long in the line. We kind of slid right in, especially once they found out I was by myself. And I gotta say guys, I used to think that this place was expensive at 70 bucks, but with inflation, it's now 85 bucks per person. Oh my goodness. So not even 70 bucks, it's 85 bucks now. Uh, I didn't think it was worth 70 bucks before, but Will it be worth 85 bucks? Hopefully it got 15 bucks better. Now we're gonna go get some food, but the first thing that they brought me is you have a selection of drinks here. So one thing that is nice about this place is that the price does include some drinks. Like at some buffets, drinks are not included. They're like extra, but here 85 bucks, it also includes juices, sodas, or iced teas. Now the juices were all like cranberry, apple, OJ, you know, your typical juices and the sodas were all your like Pepsi products, but I felt like a raspberry iced tea was a little bit more unique. Actually, that really hits the spot. Oh man, that is better than your run-of-the-mill like Lipton iced tea, you know, powdered iced tea from a can. If you guys splurge the 85 bucks to eat here, go with the raspberry iced tea, you won't regret it. Really, really, really good. Really refreshing, great raspberry flavor. Like it kind of tastes like real raspberry juice inside it. So really, really good. But let's pace ourselves with this because with a buffet, they want you to fill up on drinks. So let's save this for later just to wash down the food and let's see what they got at the buffet. Now, I learned this from another vlogger, I believe Mikey Chen, but the first thing you should do at any buffet is don't just hop right into line. Make sure you scout it out first so you know exactly what you want, so you save precious stomach space for exactly what you want, and you don't get suckered into eating a bunch of starch that's cheaper and that's gonna fill you up. Super pro tip. So we're gonna walk around, see what they got, and then select some items to bring back in review. So I am out of luck in that I am allergic to shellfish, but the big draw of this place is their seafood, like crab legs, all you can eat. Although if I remember from last time, before they let you grab as many as you want, now they have someone serving it to you. So I guess they were really eating some costs before when people were free to take as many as they wanted. Now they kind of control the portion for you. That's lame if you ask me. Actually, some crab is all you can grab. Maybe that was snow crab earlier. It looks like things though, like Dungeness crab, you can take as much as you want. Away from that section, I'm allergic. Let's look at what we can eat. And here we got some good stuff. We got baby back ribs. There, if I go underneath, you can see it. We got baby back ribs. Prime rib as well. I'm gonna get the prime rib for sure. Can't spend 85 bucks on a buffet and not eat the prime rib. And this here is a smoked brisket. 
Now, when I came here many years ago, I remember the brisket being incredible. Let us come back. For now, let's proceed with the scouting. It looks like there's some other people filming. I think they might be TikTokers. But remember how at the Wicked Spoon, they had bone marrow and it was a little bit disappointing. They got bone marrow here too at the Bacchanal. So let's hope that this bone marrow does not disappoint. Oh man, this station has some good stuff. Truffle roasted chicken? Truffle roasted chicken. Can't wait to try this with a foie gras cognac sauce and garlic herb crusted rack of lamb as well. I 100% am coming back for a nice rack of lamb. Now they got some street corn, some elotes, as they call it, elotes locos. This is a Berea taco station. Now I definitely gotta come back for this later. They have all sorts of pizzas and the pizzas, they don't look bad, but I don't know, they don't look fantastic in my opinion. You know, you spend 85 bucks to eat here. I don't know if, um, you know, eating pizza is the best call, especially when you're coming from New York, in my case, New York area. And then this here is the Asian section, and this Asian section is incredibly popular. Uh, and it's kind of hard for me to get close enough to film the food close up. I'll try my best later. Actually, I was able to find an open spot. So there are some steamed buns here, like Chinese style steamed buns, like, like cha cha buns. Spicy gochujang, Korean fried chicken, and hard to see here, but to be honest, it doesn't look half bad to me. And finally, the big line has subsided. They have some sushis as well, although the fish to rice ratio is not looking the best, but the tuna looks pretty fresh at least. And just check out this whole roasted pig. Just check out this pig's head, like with a skewer stuck through it. These are some delicious looking crispy skin pieces of roast pork. All right guys, we filmed enough. We've done enough scouting and I think we know what we're gonna zero in on. So let's grab a plate and let's eat. Thank, thank you so much. You're welcome. Sir. Hello, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Can I do a rack of lamb? Just one, one piece. One piece. One piece. I'm gonna give you the whole thing. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. You want more? No, that's good enough. Alright guys, we're back with our two plates of food and even though I don't feel like I got too much stuff, they're, they're pretty heavy actually. Mask off, remember when I used to do that? It's a really big restaurant, both in its selections, like its variety, and also there's a lot of seating space. So even though there was a big line, you know, everyone really had no problem getting in. Oh, no, this is a mirror, but... Look, there's even more space behind me there. So it's a really, really big buffet. And there's more space back there too. Look, it's like a huge space. I think this might be the biggest buffet I've ever been to so far. But we scouted out the Bacchanal and we got what we thought were the best items, sans seafood. Well, except for sushi. I can eat fish, I can't eat shellfish. My life would be so sad if I couldn't eat fish because I love sushi to death. But yeah, this is the result of our reconnaissance. Honestly, guys, both of these plates look great, so I don't know what to eat first. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Catch a tiger by its... You know what, let's go with the meats. Ding, 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 meats, you win. First, let's try some of the prime rib. All right, delicious bark. Nice pink and juicy interior. First bite of the most expensive buffet in Vegas. Okay. 
It was okay. I mean, there's some good stuff, but there's some stuff that's not so great either. It's kind of a mixed bag. The way it looks, I'm not super surprised. Uh, it kind of tastes exactly the way it looks. This bark is just incredible. Like the spice on the bark, perfectly seasoned, tastes delicious. But the inside of the prime rib, it's a little bit dry, I would say. Perhaps it's a little overcooked or something, but it's a little bit dry. I mean, even just looking at it, it doesn't look super moist. Like, it doesn't look as moist as the roast beefs we got at the Wicked Spoon. The flavor is good. The flavor of the meat is good. The flavor of the bark is good. It's just that the meat itself is dry and I believe overcooked. It also doesn't help that I'm not actually the biggest fan of prime rib in the first place. I tend to prefer steak more, just a ribeye steak, but the prime rib is only okay. But I feel like the brisket is gonna redeem it. So? All right, let's try the brisket. But to be honest, I don't know about you, the brisket is looking slightly dry to me too, at least the right side of it. Nice looking bark though. You know, the flavor is incredible and it's not as dry as it looked a little bit at first. Although it was a little bit on the chewy end, most of it was juicy. The flavor was just incredible. It had fatty flavor, the beef had good flavor, the seasoning on the bark was incredible. I think the main thing that made that piece a little on the chewy end was not so much the inside, but more the outside. Like the bark is great, but there was like too much bark. Like the skin on the outside of this brisket is just, you know, there was a lot of it in that bite. So it was a little on the chewy end. Let's take another bite and see if this second bite is a different experience. Okay, this piece has a little bit less bark, so maybe it'll be different. Cheers. Mmm, that was really, really good. Just like the last time I came here many years ago, that brisket was the bomb. It's just so fatty. The fat is just like a flavor explosion. The outside layers that are less fatty just have great beef flavor. Like the beef, the flavor of the beef is amazing. As I said earlier, the bark is great, but you know, try not to get too big of a mouthful of bark. Try to balance it out like I did on the second piece. This brisket is incredible. All right, this is a piece of the rack of lamb. Uh, you know, I'm kind of fumbling with the fork and knife, so let's just grab this and eat it straight up. That is not good at all. That is just so dry. As the kids say these days, dry AF. Is that the kids these days? That might have been my generation. Shoot. I totally get that not everyone likes medium rare or medium, but that is just incredibly dry. That is like dry beyond an acceptable level. And it's a shame because, you know, like you squeeze it, you see that there is some juiciness in it. If they had just not overcooked it to heck, you know, they could have had a good thing going here, but I'm sorry, this is not good at all. And it's under seasoned. But let's try this amazing looking bone marrow. And does this bone marrow just not look incredible? We had the one at the Wicked Spoon the other day. I feel like this one's gonna be better just by looking at it. Oh yeah, I guess you pay 85 bucks to come here. You know, this stuff can be pricey if you go to a restaurant. Here it's all you can eat. Oh yeah, and unlike the Wicked Spoon, this one is more liquidy, so we're just gonna slurp it. Mmm, delicious. Very, very, very good. See, this is the way bone marrow should be. You see the way that I was able to like slurp it like that after like loosening it a little bit? At the Wicked Spoon, it was like so dry and hard. You know, you basically had to eat it with almost like a knife and fork. This one was incredible. Nice, buttery, smooth, oily. That parsley they put on top of it, nice touch. Other spices and herbs as well. Delicious. But let's move on from the first plate and time to review the second plate. 
and we will obviously save the sushi for last. So, what should we eat first? Um, let's go with this whole roasted piece of pig. And hopefully that skin is still crispy. Now the pork tasted good and it was really fatty. It had some nice, like it had that strong pork flavor combined with that greasiness from like a roasted pork that you like. Like this kind of reminded me of like a Cantonese roast pig dish. Like a whole roasted pig with crispy skin over some rice with some sauce, delicious. Uh, in this case, I will say that other than tasting really fatty and greasy, it wasn't my favorite, even though I really liked the flavor of the pork itself. But unfortunately, for a roast pork like this, you really need the outside to be crispy. You really want that crispy skin, like that crispy chicharron skin. You really want that crispy skin to, you know, contrast with the fatty, greasy inside pork meat. Otherwise, the whole thing is just greasy and oily and it's like a big, you know, fat bomb. And if the skin is not crispy, it just tastes greasy and oily and soggy and uh, it's just off-putting. So not my favorite, unfortunately. Next, let's try the taco. Mmm, really good. I get the feeling that this tortilla is made in-house. Like I feel like this is freshly prepped in restaurant and then it's like fried on a griddle, nice and oily. My only complaint is I wish it was a little bit less oily, a little bit less greasy, but I think that's the point. And the whole thing tastes good, so let's not question the masters. Cheese on top was a nice touch as well, but when I open this guy up, the meat on the inside is what's really taking this over the edge. Juicy, tender, let me just show you how tender. Just look, I can like just take it apart like at will. So tender, just take it apart at will. Fatty, tender, well marinated, well seasoned. They just got a good recipe and I can't say much more than that. Put these pieces of meat back in and a good taco is one of life's greatest joys. No exception here. Both here and the Wicked Spoon kick butt at their tacos. Mmm, and let's wash it down with some street corn. Really zesty, creamy looking street corn. You know, lie to my face and tell me that does not look incredible. Oh yeah. Guys, this expensive plate, you know, half of it was a little bit disappointing. This second plate, Oh man, I am loving this. There's two sides of this elote, and both are great. This side is great. It's nice and cheesy, nice and creamy. Cheesy, creamy corn, especially with the corn being so sweet in this case. I mean, how could you possibly not like that? But let me tell you, this part here with some of the spices on it, the sweet corn pairs well with the spices, like the spicy spices, yet some of that cheese that they put on the other side you know, has kind of sprinkled onto this side, so so it adds like a whole new flavor profile. And also this side of the street corn kind of has more acid. I feel like it's like lemon juice or lime juice. And it's just so many intense flavors, yet they all work together in harmony. Oh, I am really enjoying this. Mmm, that corn was amazing. I left like no kernel untouched. Shoot, I was gonna move on to the pizza, but it looks like the pizza has kind of, you know, like the cheese has coagulated. It doesn't quite look so fresh anymore. So let's be fair. Let's, uh, you know, let's grab a fresh slice to review and let's try the Korean fried chicken. Ooh, oh, it's pretty spicy actually. They weren't kidding when they said gochujang, spicy wings. You know what? They definitely taste better than they look. Let me show you. They look like they're lacking crispiness, you know? Like, when I think Korean fried chicken, I think of like, you know, some crispy wings. So these aren't really like your double fried Korean fried chicken wings. They're kind of more your American style wings. 
but with a Korean flavored sauce. But hey, they uh, they did this proud, let me tell you. If you like those Korean flavors, like if you like, you know, bibimbap with that spicy gochujang sauce, you're gonna like this. Whatever this wing may lack in crispiness, it makes up for it in everything else. This chicken, just look. This chicken is moist, not dry and stringy at all. You know, when I'm squeezing it, it's not like stringing apart. So that's how you know it's cooked perfectly. Skin, I guess, is a little bit too soft, at least just for my preference, but the flavor of the sauce is incredible. If you have spice tolerance, you'll like it. If you like those key Korean flavors, like they really bring out what's special about Korean sauces. Delicious. I can see through the wing. So, cleaned house on that. Last but hopefully not least, a piece of sushi. It's a pretty thin piece of fish. Like, just look at how thin that fish is. It's a thin piece of fish and a lot of rice to try to fill you up. Hopefully it still tastes good. The fish is also pretty cold to the touch here, so uh, that's not great. Like, sushi really should be room temperature if possible. Okay, so actually, the sushi is actually not bad. The fish is pretty good, tastes really fresh, not fishy or anything. Really, really tender. The fish really like kind of like melts in your mouth. The main issue with it is that, like I said earlier, the temperature was kind of off. The fish itself was too cold. They probably should take it out of the refrigerator a little bit earlier so that the fish can come to more room temperature. You know, they had a good thing going with their quality of fish, but if the fish weren't so cold, you could really taste the flavors better. But it was good, and the rice was actually not bad. Their sushi rice recipe, not bad. Not too vinegary and not too sweet. Oh man, take a look. The first plate, you know, uh, kind of left a lot of stuff intact. Second plate, I completely cleaned up the second plate. So we probably, you know, have enough to leave our final verdict. So let's grab a dessert and then I'll share my final verdict. Oh shoot, I just realized I forgot about the pizza. I need to grab a fresh slice of pizza and review it. So let's do that real quick. All right, we grabbed a pizza slice, and last time I tried to grab a slice that looked a little bit crispier and less doughy, but uh, this time it looks like we didn't have as much luck, you know? None of them looked as good as the last one, but just gotta roll with the punches, just gotta deal the cards we're dealt. At least it's more fair that we got a fresh one, so let's give the Bacchanal pizza a fair shake, why don't we? All right. You know, it's actually one of the better square slices I've had. Obviously, we came from the New York area. I can't really expect it to be the industry pizza, you know? But it's good. Um, it would probably not be on par with the good pizzerias in New York, but outside of New York, very, very good. It was crispy, but not just like a big square cracker. It had doughiness to it, like the right amount. The crust was oily in a good way. The sauce was nice and zesty, a little sweet, a little spicy, and the pepperoni nice and oily and not overcooked like it really pushed out too much grease. The only thing is that the cheese was a little bit sus. It was not the best quality cheese and probably, you know, cheese that was maybe akin to like frozen pizza, but a good slice nonetheless. I'm gonna share my final thoughts. We'll grab a dessert and then we'll share our final thoughts. Oh, by the way, it's UA from the future. Um, so it's me from the future, as you can tell by my hat being backwards. After the video, I wound up getting seconds or thirds, I guess. And I wound up trying the pho and uh, yeah, I realized that this is something that I should review. I mean, this is a buffet, but as far as pho goes, it's actually not looking too bad. The broth looks very light, you know, not too dark, which is a good sign. The noodles looked well cooked and the beef is looking Pretty juicy and pretty good. Let's try some of the beef first, why don't we? And it's shaved and sliced real thin. All right, let's take a bite. Mmm. 
Now, the frugal jerks only gave me one piece of beef, unfortunately. So once again, we'll go back in time. And to be honest, the beef is pretty juicy, pretty tender, pretty good quality. And as far as fuzz go, I gotta say, this is one of the better fuzz I've had. The beef was tender, it tasted fatty, it wasn't dry at all. Great. Let's try some of the noodles, why don't we? All right. The noodles are okay. I feel like as far as rice noodles go, uh, they're maybe not my favorite. Tastes like a cheaper brand. I mean, they don't taste bad. They're certainly passable. You know, they're passable, but they taste like a cheaper brand. Like the rice noodles that you get from like a Western grocery store, as opposed to the ones that you get from like an Asian grocery store. A little bit more mushy than I would like, and a little too soft. Let's now try what makes or breaks every Asian noodle soup, the broth. Mmm. Actually, the broth's not bad. It's definitely not gonna be the best pho you've had. Not by a long shot. I mean, I think wherever you are in the world, if you have a go-to pho place, it's probably gonna be better than this. And by probably, I mean definitely. But it's still not bad. Like, the way it tastes, I've had crappy pho before. And I know when I'm just drinking powder, like MSG, eating a bowl of pho that's a glorified instant noodles. But this pho, you can just tell, you know, by the flavor, even by like the shine and like the oil bubbles on top, that this broth comes from real beef bones. And while I've had pho's, you know, several pho's that are more rich and savory than this, I would say this is definitely a solid bowl of pho, a pretty passable one, really quite good for a buffet. That's it from future UA. Back at you, past UA. All right, guys, we're back with our desserts and we got a mango gelato. And this will be the last thing we will review from this buffet. Uh, you know, this review was obviously not exhaustive. Lots of items, many, many more items that we did not review, but we selectively decided to review the items that we chose. And I feel like it gave me a gauge of how the buffet is overall. It's a pretty solid looking gelato though, so I'm kind of excited. Mmm, really good gelato, and I feel like I picked the perfect dessert. Perfect thing to end this review on. The gelato is creamy. Just look at it. It's creamy and rich. Oh, I think a piece of strawberry might have gotten mixed into it. Fluffy, almost like a cloud. If I hold it like this, you might think it's like mashed potatoes. And it's not too thick, like some gelatos are so thick it's like you gotta chew it. But it is thick enough where you can choose to chew it or you can choose to let it melt and dissolve if you so choose. And it's got great mango flavor as well. I'm not sure if they used fresh mango for this. I wouldn't blame them if they didn't, but I mean, it tastes like fresh mango. That's all I care about. Mm. Delicious. But guys, I think we're gonna conclude our review. I think I have enough now to make my verdict. So, first of all, was this a good buffet? 100% yes. I gotta say that it wasn't perfect, but as far as buffets go, this is probably one of the best buffets I've been to. Now that being said, it was, it was 85 bucks, which is very, very pricey. I already thought 70 bucks was expensive back in the day. 85 bucks, oh man. I don't know, it was good. I don't know if it was worth 85 bucks, so. So first of all, I'm just gonna say, it's kind of up to you whether it's worth it or not. Like, in my opinion, compared to the Wicked Spoon, there's no question, this place is head and shoulders above the Wicked Spoon. Like, it's not even a contest. That being said, Wicked Spoon was like half the price. I mean, I don't know, you're on vacation. I mean, would you rather spend 30, 40 bucks and, you know, get a mediocre experience? Or would you rather spend twice that much and guarantee yourself a great time? I guess I kind of still stand by my opinion. I, you know, when I came here a few years ago, I felt like it was good, but I felt like it
it was overpriced, I still stand by that opinion. Despite the fact that I very much enjoyed this restaurant, I still think that in this case 85 bucks, 85 bucks is a lot of money. I mean that's money that you spend at like a fancy steakhouse or a Michelin star joint or something. But that being said, I still will say that the Bacchanal Buffet in Caesars Palace, in my opinion, hands down the best buffet in Vegas. And while objectively maybe not worth the price, if you're willing to spend 85 bucks to guarantee a good time, you're on vacation so you feel like YOLO, then I leave that decision up to you. But anyways guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you've been to the Bacchanal before, what do you guys think of the Bacchanal? And what's your favorite buffet in Vegas? Let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike. If you like my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. That way you stay up to date whenever I post another video. And until next time, I'll see you later.